Hello and welcome back to Advent of Code 2021. Today we are working on day 14. So first of all, I think we're just gonna be taking the input, doing the basic parsing, and then we're gonna do a bit of thinking before jumping in coding. So we are um, copy pasting the template that is available on the GitHub repository. So here, oh yeah, I need to change the template to add a trim here. That should, or here, that should remove this the need for the filter boolean. Okay, so we trim. First of all, we need to do a double, a split on double line return. And the reason is that there are two inputs. The first input is called the template and then the pair insertions. So this is the template and then this is the pair insertions, pair insertion rules. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, so let's, let's call that data actually because here we want the pair uh, insert let's say let's call that the pair root that's gonna be simpler and it's gonna be data that map oops what happened map and here we want to do x that split on um, I'm actually gonna copy paste these characters okay and we should have our initial formula and the output thingy. So let's log uh, template and pair rules. No day fourteen dot js. Main mistake here. Oh yeah, of course data here. I need, I need to do. Let's do a trim again, and we want to split on a line return. And we removed already all the anti slash r, so we should be good on Windows. Okay, so we have this, and then we have something that's good enough. Maybe we change the structure of this array. Uh, but oh, what, what's what's up with the percentage? I think. Or well, maybe that's because there's no line return. I don't know. Not, not a problem. Let's focus on the important stuff. So. What's important now is to do a bit of thinking around the example. So I've read already the prime statements of stream. I've been doing a little bit of thinking. And what I want to share here is that you can see there is here like some kind of a curve that you might recognize. And we're actually going to check the complexity of that. So the input is that. First step is that. Second step is that what you can see is that here we had four characters then we have seven then we have 13 and what happens is that each step we take uh, x the we take the number of character x so let's let's call that n actually and here we do times two minus one because it's four, then it's seven, then it's 13. So each time we do times two minus one. So if you want to take that, the complexity, we can remove the minus one and just take the times two. And it means that every turn we're doing times two. So you can deduce that basically it's two to the power of n. Wait, no, n times two to the power of uh, steps. How many steps? So here you have four characters. Uh, if you have just one step, you just multiply it by two. You have approximately eight characters. And then here, you multiply it by, you do n times four. I mean, that's just, it just means that we have the complexity is O of two to the power of n of let's call this x, which is the steps. So this is basically an exponential complexity. And that's a little bit of parenthesis that I wanted to do. 
that shows that we're going to have some trouble if we are just trying to generate these because this is going to grow and grow and grow and this is going to get far too big far too quickly so we're going to have to be smart and do some optimization already in part one i mean yeah i'm not sure if we need that already in part one but i think i think i want to be sure that the code of part one is good and that's also a good thing to to play around with in for the the purpose of the video so one thing i'd like to show in order to understand how we want to make this smart is let's say you have n n n oh i don't let's let's take a new thing so here if you have n n it's becoming c so basically the first n n gives n c n and the second n n gives n c n again so you have that and what you can see is that then you have nc that is already, um, you have to compute twice the expansion of nc and then you have to compute twice the expansion of cn. So basically you are repeating the work again and again. And so what would be nice would be just to compute nn once we know that it's doing n c n and then you compute n c and c n once you check what it does and then basically instead of yeah computing the full string you just take the two letters next to each other and you compute what it does and basically we are like avoiding to do the job several times and um, yeah so here you know that nn it's gonna generate one of these two thing and so if you have nnn you know that you have two times n n at the beginning that's that's your starter it means that you have two times n c n that means you have two two times c n c and two two times c n and now the thing is you need to compute i believe the number of time each element appears so what do you do so here we're just going to do one step with n n n you know you have two times n n so step zero and then step one you have two times n c and two times c n yeah that's that's correct so if you think about that here in the end you should have like the correct answer would be you have three times n plus two times c and here we have two four n so because we take always all the doubles what you what we could do is just take the first element of this double and then keep in memory the last one. I know that's clear, but basically here you just say, okay, step zero, you have that, plus it's the original string is ending by n. So basically two times n, n you take the first one, it's n, the second, you have two times n plus n, so that's three n, that's correct. Here you say two times n plus two times c plus the ending n. So we have three times n, that's correct. So I hope that was clear, but basically you know, we have a new data structure here that's just uh, some pairs with a number of times it occurs. And we just remember the last uh, 
uh, value here. And in order to do the sum, the in order to count the character, we just have to count. We just have to take into account the first character of the pair. Because here we have this pair, you count this one. Then you have this pair, you count this one. And then you just have to keep in memory the last one. So I hope that was clear. Let me know if this wasn't. I'll try to explain if you have any questions in the comments. But that's basically the data structure that I've been thinking about and that we are going to code here. So first of all, you need to create a data structure from this string here. So uh, create data structure from the template. So in my mind, that would be a map from a specific map equal new map and we are going to go through each of the um, template value uh, here we do minus one because here we want to do template i plus template i plus one plus pair and now we check if map has if the map doesn't have the pair actually i'm not sure if i'm going to use a map uh, let, let's let's try to use a map but might not be the best uh, thing to do map dot set pair to zero then we do map that set pair map that get pair plus one yes let's try to display the map here i think that should be fine so the map here is saying nn is one nc is one and cb is one so we have exactly what we wanted so that's the first step now we need to do uh, the steps let me think for a second okay just had to do a short break um i was saying we need to do this expansion now for a specific number of steps actually let's check how many steps we need we need let's let's do it slowly you know we're gonna just say a uh, step and here we're gonna say we have just one step for now and we're gonna display the map every time so here we need to keep in mind the last character as well we said const last char equal Uh, template template of template net minus one okay so we have all the data that we need and actually here we're gonna need to create a new map every time so here we're gonna say let current new map okay actually let's create a function to increment function add to map value so here that's going to be a lot simpler uh, map and value so here we're going to be using this code so that's it we don't need to copy it several times uh here instead of value we're gonna say key key so if the map doesn't have the key the map the we said zero to the key if the map and then we just increment the key by one so now we can just say add to map uh, pair 
Oh. Map and pair. That should be simpler. Uh, we still have the same thing for the initial template. That's perfect. Now we need to do the work. So, so here, in order to do, so here, what we need to do is for each pair of map. So for of. I don't know how to iterate in map. We're going to say object dot keys of map. Would that work? Map dot keys actually. Const keys for of key of keys. What do we do? We need to take the key and re do the work here. So what I want to do is to make, we have this data structure right now that is called pair rule that is not so good. So here, create a better pair rule data structure. Because here we have like two characters gives one character. Uh, I mean, you need to, if you have these two characters, you need to insert this one into the two characters. So I think we want to um, create something better. Can't pair rules map. We're gonna create a new map again, because we love maps now. Today we are all about maps. Uh, <laughs> so now we need to do a for of rule of pair rules. And what we need to do is Here we say pair rules map dot set rule of zero. So this is ch and we need to input two things, two strings. One is rule zero of zero plus rule one. I'm going to explain that in a second. That's a bit cryptic, but basically I'm going to actually, I'm just going to load that and that will make, that should make a lot of sense. Rules map. The pair rules map, when you have CH, instead of saying, okay, B is the next step, we say, okay, CH gives us CB plus HB. Because basically, if you insert B between C and H, in our data structure here, we need to increment CB of 1 and CH and HB of 1. That looks fine. Actually, let's give a bit more space to the, for the code now. So now we have the best way to uh, retrieve this information, the rules. And here we have a specific key. So here we need to say current dot, no, we need to reuse add to map. And we want to add to current, we need to add next pairs map dot get key and next of zero and next of one. And at the end, we need to say map equal current. And here we're displaying the map. So let's try that. So now we have two times NC. So here we have NC and that's all, so there is a mistake somewhere. N, N, C, B. Maybe I went too fast. So now we need to, I'd like to double check this thing, the parallels map. Let's do that. 
we want to double check this, make sure this is correct. So we're going to take a couple of random things. CH gives B, so it's CB and oh, CB and BH. No, that's not correct. B, that's the kind of thing when you have a code that is hard to read. So yeah, I won't like this code here is hard to read, which means uh, in real life, you do unit test on top of it. You add some commands to explain what, what's happening. Actually, I need to add a comment. Uh, if you have ch gives b, it creates two uh, ch creates cb and bh. So that's it, C, B, and B, H. That's better. So now if you run that again, and we remove this log, because I think now we fixed the bug, we have NC1, NC, CN, N, uh, NB, PC, CH, HB. That is right so now from that map we want to compute how many of each element there is so you guess what we do we do another map const element count we want to go through each element in the map so we're just gonna do that again I mean, except here, this is not. And for each key, we do add to map element count. We add key of zero because you remember we said if you if we have n n, we want to add just the n here. And now we log the element count. So we have 2n, 2c, 1b, 1h. 2n, 2c, 1b, 1h. So here, as you see, we are missing 1b. And this is this thing that we add here. So we're just going to do that first. Add to map element count uh, last char. And we should have all of our characters here. So I, I'm not going to try that again. Uh, we are going to do. We want the least common and the most common element. So now we need to do another step here, which is find the biggest and the smallest element here. So I think we're just going to do object that entries of can, can we do that object entries of no I we might not be do that we do element count dot entries I believe let me yeah I think that's what we do const entries so what happens here it give us the same as the map, except we have an array here. So we can do max and min. Uh, so what we're going to do you know, to find max and min Actually, instead of entries, here we're gonna also do keys. I'm just like this is a bit of an. This is becoming very long. No, not keys. We actually need values here. <laughs> I'm gonna explain in a second why. Here, let's display value. Wait, no, value is B C. No, that's not what I was expecting. I think I was expecting. 
oh, keys and values I was saying I need values okay so now I can do actually const mean equal math dot mean of values const max equal math dot mean max values and actually we don't care which value is the most maximum minimum we just actually so we don't care about the entries here we just care about the values and here we display uh, max minus min i believe this is what we need <laughs> what's happening with max and min minus infinity is not the right answer mm. Mm. we're gonna log the values here Maybe it's because it's an iterator or something like that. I don't care about having an iterator. I think we need to transform that into an array like that. Let's make sure. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. That was uh, because any, uh, map dot values give us an iterator. So we need an array. And then we can apply math dot min and math dot max. And now we can do max minus min. I believe this is what we need to do, right? Maximum and, min and minimum. Okay. Uh, so this is correct. So we need after step 10. Okay, so we need to do 10 steps. Let's do that. Uh, that should be correct. We have two in the end that doesn't look correct. So we're gonna do things, we're gonna debug that slowly. But I think we're like heading in a good direction already. It's just there might be some little mistakes here and there. So here what we see, we see the final thingy. NB3, um, actually we care about, okay, element count is really good. Have you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go slow, slow. We're gonna do step one. We're gonna take the element count. Have two b, two c, two n, and one h. B c n h. That's correct. We're gonna go to step two. Four B, okay, that's not correct. One, two, three, four, five, six B. So that is not correct. Oh, I think I know what happened. So here we say add to map, but uh, value equal one here plus value. So what we need to remember, is that uh, here we shouldn't add just one here. We need to add key, so we need to add current dot get key. Because here when you see NB, you don't you look here, you say, okay, it's, it should be nb plus bn. You don't want to just add nb once and bn once. You, want, you need to add nb twice and bn and bb twice. So yeah, that's, we're actually taking care of this number. So that's, yeah, hard, hard, I think it's getting complex to explain actually. <laughs> Let's try that. So here we, let's make sure I'm doing the right thing here. We add, so here we need to add one. Here, we need to add the number of, the, on the previous generation, so not current, here we need map. D 
Did that change anything? Sure. Um, add to map. So here, by the way, I'm setting the default of value. So when there is just two attributes, the value will be equal to one. And when there are three attributes, like here, the value will be set to this value. Okay, so here we are on turn the step two. Step two should have one, uh, three, four, five, six Bs, and we have just four Bs. So we have an issue. Let's go back to step one, just to make sure we have the right stuff. We have NC, CN, and B, NC, CN, and B, B, C, C, H, H, B. B, C, C, H, H, B. Yes. And we have one of each here. So actually, this wasn't the bug that this wasn't the bug here. Okay. So here there will be here. If we go to the next step, that won't really take advantage of uh, our optimization. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think here, I think here the prem, here the element count, we don't need to add just one, we need to also take into account the value here. That's twice the same mistake. <laughs> Map dot get key. Yes. So here you don't say there is one B, you say there is two Bs. That should look better. Okay, B equal to six. So we look, it looks like we have something correct. And after 10 steps, it should be, let's do 10 steps right away, just to make sure we are. Okay, we have the same numbers. I think we cracked, we cracked it. So let's hide the debugging lines. Just keep this looks good. Um, that's perfect, that looks good actually. We need to find the full puzzle input. Oh, that was intense. I hope I didn't lose anyone here. Let's see if we are correct. That is good. Let's check part two. I'm gonna read that briefly. Okay, I've got good news. We just need to increase to 40 steps. And because we've thought so much about the, um, the optimization in terms of complexity, in terms of memory, I think we should be good. That, that, that looks like a huge number. And JavaScript should handle numbers that huge, I, I hope. I think it should. I never know when uh, a number is losing, it starts to lose precision in JavaScript. So we're gonna hope everything's fine. Um, yeah, I think, I think it should be good. So yeah. Oh, wait. Don't forget, we need to do, I always like to keep the code for part one and part two. Okay. So this can go outside of part one. And yeah, we're just gonna be, you know what? We're just gonna be lazy and copy pasting because we've done so much work in part one. We can be a little bit lazy and copy paste for part two. Okay, we have both part one and part two displayed now. Let's check this out. That's correct. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, hope you learned a thing or two here today. Um, we really tried to focus on complexity to get it right and it 
really helped us a ton on part two. So I'm really happy about that. Um, yeah, if you liked the video, don't forget to drop a like, drop a comment as well. It really, uh, I'm really enjoying reading the comments. So thank you very much for the feedback so far and for the support in this series in general. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye bye.